Hey again, I'm John T. Boston II. I spoke to you earlier about the culture of evangelism, and there's one critical feature that I want to underscore here, and that is creating an environment where appeals are a part of the process. In everything that happens, an appeal should be made. And what do I mean by an appeal? I mean an actual call for people to make a decision to follow Jesus Christ and commit themselves to him, his path, and for many of them, it will be for baptism. Now, I want to unpack this a bit because this is a challenge area. There is this idea that compassion and proclamation are two separate parts of the gospel work. And the truth of the matter is, is they were never designed to be separated. If you separate compassion from uh, proclamation, it's called social work. And social work is a great high and holy calling. If you separate uh, the making an appeal or proclamation or proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ from compassion, you actually don't get very far in the process. You need both of these elements working together. You need to be out working in the streets, participating in marches, organizing initiatives where people can come in contact with the love of Christ. But at the same time, you don't want to give groceries without giving the bread of life. You don't want to pass out bottles of water without telling people about the one who can quench the thirst of their soul. You do not want to be a part of social justice without reminding people that one day God, his justice will reign supreme. You want both of these things to happen at the same time. They are inextricable twins, like I talked about in the last presentation. And so I want to talk about the art of making appeals, not, not stylistically. I'm not talking about how you make an appeal. I'm talking about the culture of appeal. One of the things that should happen in a local church or ministry initiative is that every member should know that an appeal is a time for them to begin praying. That means that community service initiative, someone said, well, we take money from the state or from federal government and we can't force people to come to church. Let me tell you something. I was a part of some of the largest feed the needy programs in the North American division. And in those initiatives, we didn't force people to come, but we asked them if they would like to join a prayer service prior to the food distribution. They did not have to come. And nearly, nearly 100% of them would always say, I ask absolutely would like to come to that. It's not forced, it's an invitation, and it's not required, but people are interested and people wanted to come. So I wanted to just kind of put that to bed for a little bit. But here in our compassion initiatives, we have to ask ourselves, how will we ask people to make a decision, okay? And so it may not always be for baptism. I wish that baptism could be an appeal in every single thing that we do. I'm mature enough now, maybe not last week, but I'm mature enough now to accept that that may not always be the appeal, but there should always be an appeal. And so Make sure your members understand that's a part of it. In small groups, making appeals. In Sabbath school, in prayer meeting, making an appeal. The, 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 the response to this that I have heard is, well, we don't have guests, so why make an appeal? Then that's a deeper challenge that you're facing. If you don't have people that are coming that will respond to an appeal, you've got to then deal with the culture of evangelism. So make sure you go back uh, as, as, and look at that if you haven't seen that. You need to have a culture culture of evangelism because that's how people will come. With the culture of evangelism, you have the culture of appeal. And what that means is, is every leader in small groups, in prayer meetings, in Bible studies, in Sabbath school initiatives, the Sabbath worship experience, you know that there is going to be an appeal made. The members are prepared, and as soon as the appeal is made, the church clerk or the elders or the deacons or whomever is appointed, hospitality. I used all of the leaders in the church to participate in this. They're going to the front of the church, for me in my context, and they're, they're ready to receive people as they come. That does two things. One, it cues your church that they should always expect that people will respond. And secondly, it helps people who are unwilling to break the ice of response to see that other people are prepared to receive them or moving themselves for the response. And so I don't want to get into the stylistics of that, but in a small group, every small group, you should ask people, is anyone here 
that would like to make a decision to, to accept Jesus Christ because your small group should be evangelistic in nature. If you've got a small group that is not hosting people that are not Christian or not believers in some way, then you've got a club. They're great book clubs and they're great uh, clubs for cycling or clubs for fathers, but it may not be a ministry initiative. And so you want to reevaluate that a little bit. And of course, I'm not condemning anyone that has a gathering of people that believe the same thing and do that regularly over an extended period of time without inviting other people to be a part. But I am suggesting that there are other ways, and this is another way to make that evangelistic. So you always are making appeals. And let me tell you why you do that. Because one, the church will grow into the place where they understand if I bring someone as a guest or if someone shows up here, our church is prepared. It also cues you as a spiritual leader, whether you're a preaching elder or pastor or whatever role you play, it reminds you that we are here. It centers you on mission. It's an anchor. Have you ever seen, um, I remember once I went fishing with my father-in-law and uh, he, my responsibility was to throw the anchor over. And uh, after an hour of fishing, we realized that we had drifted quite far because we were catching and it was exciting. And he said, well, go ahead and pull the anchor up. And I went to look at the anchor and it wasn't there. What happened? I threw the anchor down, but I wasn't tied to the boat. I wasn't tethered to the boat. Making appeals regularly will anchor you so no matter where you drift, and that happens, missional drift, you'll at least always have this anchor to where you need to be and what needs to happen. And that's really critical. Christmas programs, Easter programs, uh, children's initiatives, vacation Bible school, Pathfinders. We made appeals at every Pathfinder gathering. Our elder, Rui Bruce, will let you know in Columbus, Ohio, when I was pastoring there. Our Pathfinders in Australia, the same thing. Pathfinders at churches across North America doing the same thing. And this is a COVID safe thing to do. If you have gatherings online, make appeals, ask people to make a decision. And when it comes down to it, you don't really want to let any gathering go without asking people if they'd like to be baptized. I went to Pastor Samuel Adjay's church in Columbus, Ohio, the uh, Columbus Ghanaian English service in, in um, Columbus there. And I love that city. I served there for a few years and I love that territory. And I saw the pastor, the clerk got up and she said, we have baptism on this date. And I asked the pastor later, I said, pastor, I see this in the bulletin. I see that uh, you have baptism and they're advertising this online and they're practicing uh, the, the proper safety procedures for being in that place of worship together in the wake of a pandemic. And I said, so how many people are getting baptized? He said, I don't know. And I said, well, why do you have the date? He said, we have the date because we believe people will make a decision. And do you know that Sabbath, when I was there, I made an appeal because I don't preach without making an appeal. It's not a sermon without an appeal. It's a motivational talk without an appeal. And I made an appeal and someone made a decision for baptism. What I want to say to you is that making an appeal for baptism is a critical feature of true church growth. We are called to be salt and light, but there is no light more bright than the light of the promise of God's love and his soon coming. Ask people to accept that. Believe that they will. And I'll end here with this very simple story of a young preacher who uh, came to a great evangelist at the end of one of his evangelistic meetings one night. And he said to the evangelist, he said, how is it that all of these people respond when you make appeals? And the evangelist, he was quiet for a moment and he responded. He said, do you expect to the young preacher, do you expect people to respond every time you make an appeal? And the young preacher thought for a moment. He said, well, no, not really. And the evangelist said, that's exactly the problem. You should always expect that people will respond. But if they don't, my friend, that's not where success is. When you make an appeal, success is not in how many people respond. And I've made probably thousands of appeals, but success is not in how many people respond. The success of an appeal is in how faithful you are in discharging your responsibility as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel warrants a response. Whether you're an elder or pastor, make an appeal. Ask people to respond to the great truth 
of God's love. And I assure you that over time, if not immediately, people will come because the Holy Spirit can use those appeals in any situation for people to respond to the voice of God in their lives. Make the appeal a part of the culture of the local church, and I assure you that your growth will be impacted in the most beautiful of ways. The success is not in how many respond, but in you faithfully making the appeal, and you will find over time that the success of someone making a decision in their hearts by the power of the Holy Spirit, the harvest will come because the Holy Spirit will always do the great work that he does. He's asking us to do our work of being faithful, to ask people to respond to the great beauty of God's love and the power of his soon coming. Create a culture of making appeals and the baptisms will take care of themselves.